You know, in the last 10 years, online t-shirt sales have absolutely exploded. Yep. Every single year, demand and sales for t-shirts grows and it grows. And so if you are looking to take advantage of this and create your own t-shirt line to sell, then this video is for you. Because you see, as a lot of my subscribers already know, I have a print on demand clothing business and while I do sell a wide range of clothing, my number one clothing item that I sell is t-shirts. Each month I make thousands of dollars selling t-shirts and while I may not be the leading world expert on selling t-shirts, over time I've definitely learned a lot about why some of my t-shirts sell super well and others, well, don't. So in this video, I'm going to give you 10 actionable tips I've learned along the way on creating and designing t-shirts that sell. And it doesn't matter whether you're selling t-shirts in your own private store like me, or on Redbubble, or Merch by Amazon or Etsy, these tips are for you. Tip 1. Spy on super popular winning t-shirt designs. So a lot of people ask me this question, they say, Sarah, I see that t-shirt sales are growing and growing and I want to take advantage of this. Is just one problem. I don't know what types of t-shirts that people want to buy. And you know what? Nobody does when they first get started. So what do you think that they do? They spy on other successful t-shirt stores, see what their top designs are, and take inspiration from those. And one of my favorite places to do this is on Etsy because on here you can very easily spy on super popular t-shirt designs to inspire you to make your own. Now, I'm sure my regular viewers and uh, subscribers will know what Etsy is, uh, but the reality is most people who watch my videos aren't subscribers, which is why I sometimes have to re-explain these things. So for those of you who are new out there, welcome. Second of all, this is not an Australian accent, I have a New Zealand accent. And thirdly, yes, this is Etsy, and Etsy is a third-party marketplace. And it's very similar to eBay. If you come to eBay and you type in funny t-shirts, the listings you get won't be from funny t-shirts that eBay themselves are selling. Instead, it'll be everyday individuals like you or I that come in and list our t-shirts for sale. Well, Etsy is exactly the same, except on Etsy, it has some limitations. So on Etsy, you can only sell vintage items or items that you've designed or created yourself, such as t-shirts that you made with free print on demand apps like Printify or Spreadshirt, so I suspect most of you who are looking to start selling your own t-shirts are going to be using print-on-demand apps like this. So here is how you can find t-shirts that are currently selling well on Etsy. So just open up a t-shirt category and browse through the listings. Now Etsy literally has thousands and thousands of t-shirt listings, so you can't look over them all, but what you should do is go through the first 10 pages or so of t-shirt listings. And that's because every time a customer buys a t-shirt on Etsy, they will bring that t-shirt to the front of the order listing. So you know that any t-shirts that are listed in the first 10 or so pages must have been bought recently. So go through these and open up the t-shirts and use the reviews to identify which ones are super popular designs. And so here's how you can tell if a design is super popular. So we'll take this t-shirt here as an example. Now, yes, this has obviously been bought recently because it is on the second page of results on Etsy. However, if you check it out, this t-shirt has only been reviewed five times in the past year that it's been up online. Now, it is true that most people, they don't leave a review on Etsy. I mean, as you can see, this store has had 5,123 reviews, but yet it's had over 36,000 sales. So most people who buy products on Etsy, they don't leave a review. Uh, but even with that in mind, chances are this t-shirt it only sells a few times a month for the seller. So it's not a big, super popular design. So, you know, it's good to use as inspiration if you just want to create a t-shirt that will sell moderately well, but less good if you want to create a viral, super popular design. Instead, you want to find t-shirts like this one here. You know, so not only has this t-shirt had substantially more reviews, but they aren't spread out over years and years either. This t-shirt, it's relatively new. It gets reviews nearly every day. And some days it gets multiple reviews, which shows that this t-shirt is selling multiple times every day, not just occasionally. And remember, only a small percentage of customers actually bother to leave a review. So basically what you can take away from this then is that yes, if you have a free organic traffic source like free Etsy traffic, then sure, you could take inspiration from this t-shirt here. But if you wanna create a viral design, then this t-shirt would be a much better one to study and use as inspiration for creating your own winning design. 
And by the way, if you've got any questions about selling t-shirts online, then you should be sure to come to my Instagram live hangout, which is going to be held at 8 p.m. Eastern USA time tonight, as in the day that this video goes live. I regularly hold Instagram live Q&A hangout sessions for my followers, so go ahead and follow me if you haven't already. But anyway, back to the video. Tip two, cross niche, cross niche, and cross niche. All right, so let's circle back to that winning design that we found on Etsy. So this design here, it's sold really well for many reasons. One, of course, is that obviously we can see that it's visually appealing to people. You know, this style of typography design, it's super cool, and it's a great basis for people watching to use as inspiration for your own designs. But there is another reason that this t-shirt has sold really well too. And that's because it's a really good example of a cross niche design. So we can see that this t-shirt, it targets a very specific type of person. It targets someone who is a mother, someone who loves tattoos and Excuse my language. I tried to think of another phrase for this, but I genuinely couldn't. Uh, it describes someone here who is basically a badass <laughs> uh, and who doesn't adhere to traditional beauty tropes. <laughs> so let's imagine for a moment that we've got a lady, Anna. She is buying a t-shirt as a gift for her friend, Zoe. Now, Zoe is someone who personally identifies as being a badass, or in New Zealand, we would say being a badass. <laughs> she has tattoos, she loves them. She rejects traditional beauty tropes. And she's also a very proud mother. Now, Anna is buying a t-shirt for Zoe. And she sees this one and she's like, oh yeah, Zoe is proud of being a mother. She'd like this. And then she sees this one and she's like, oh man, Zoe isn't just proud of being a mother. She's proud of being a badass mother. She'd love this. But then she sees this one and she's like, that is Zoe to a T. Zoe will be like, whoa, that's totally me. She'd love this t-shirt. This will make the most amazing gift. I have to buy it. The more the customer identifies and sees themselves in the t-shirt, the more it will trigger them emotionally, making them want to buy it. That is the power of cross niching. However, it does have some limitations. Tip three, research your customer before you design your t-shirt. So I remember I had this super lovely viewer, Kyan, who unfortunately had opened a store and his t-shirts were not selling well. And he asked me to look over his merch store because he wasn't sure why his t-shirts were not selling. He wanted to know why his store had, in his own words, failed. So I went to his store to do a review and check it out. And I was like, this store is so average and underwhelming. I mean, take this t-shirt. It's an underwhelming cartoon picture of a lazy pug on a t-shirt. That's it. And so after I accidentally called Kai and Kyle, and I'm really sorry about that by the way, I basically told him that right now his t-shirts were too broad and he needed to niche down to appeal emotionally to target his customer. And so do you know what Kai and responded with? Okay, could I cross a pug with a milkshake? Oh, no Kai and no. So here is what you want to do. You want to imagine a real life example of a pug owner that you want to target. What sort of person is likely to own a pug? Well, probably someone who is at least moderately well off and affluent. And that's for many reasons. Pugs are a pedigree breed and they have small litters and they have a myriad of health complications and are in high demand. And the reason they're in demand is because while I'm definitely not a fan of the ethical issues surrounding their breeding, I'm certainly not blind and I can tell you they're extremely cute. So a lot of affluent women purchase pugs. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think these women are particularly interested in milkshakes to the point that they would buy a t-shirt about it? Chances are there really aren't that many. So a t-shirt featuring pugs and milkshakes doesn't really make a lot of sense. But a t-shirt targeting pug owners that like coffee, that makes a whole lot more sense to try. You can't just cross any two niches together. They have to make sense. This was one of the top selling t-shirts last Halloween on Amazon. It's a fantastic example of cross niche, combining Halloween and dinosaurs. No, these two things, they ain't related. But you know what? When the target market, i.e. eight year old boys, sees this and they go, awesome, I love Halloween, I love dinosaurs, I love this t-shirt, it's gonna sell super well. Whereas if you came along and decided to change up this t-shirt to instead be this, Zoe looks at this and she's like, yeah, I was really vibing with that t-shirt until that bit about the dinosaurs. Understandably, 30 something year old Zoe isn't particularly interested in dinosaurs. Just because you can do something cayenne doesn't mean you should. 
And by the way, if you're enjoying this video and you would like to learn even more about setting up a print on demand store, then you should be sure to download my free ebook, The Six Steps That Six Figure Online Stores Follow to Make Over $10,000 a Month. And you'll find a link to download my free ebook in the video description below. But anyway, back to the video. Tip four, choose a style that matches your customer. So remember our reasonably affluent, pug-loving lady? We'll call this lady Claire. So if I was here on Shutterstock looking for some art to make a pug t-shirt for Claire, you know what? There are some designs that I'd be much more interested in trying than others. See, when I imagine Claire, I picture her as someone who wants to wear something a bit more elegant rather than cartoony. So Claire would probably appreciate this design here a whole lot more than say this design here. And sure, the pun may get a laugh out of her if he showed it to her, but seriously, can you picture Claire wearing this shirt out to a lunch date with her friends? Or can you picture Claire wearing this t-shirt instead? Out of the two, I think that she would find this a more aesthetically pleasing design. So design with your target customer in mind. Tip five, black t-shirts sell the best. So I and pretty much any other t-shirt store out there will tell you that it's usually our black t-shirts that are our number one top selling color. And honestly, I don't think that this is surprising at all. Because I don't know about you, but I love black t-shirts. Almost as much as I love smashing that like button and helping out your favorite YouTubers. <laughs> but seriously, thank you very much for your support. <laughs> but yes, if I sell a t-shirt and it comes in black, that is usually the most popular color. And I honestly don't think it takes a rocket science to figure out why black t-shirts are so popular. It's flattering on most body shapes, it's neutral so it goes with most clothing, and it doesn't get dirty easily. Everyone loves black t-shirts. Because of that then, if I had any advice to give to this Etsy store, I'd tell them, mate, this most popular t-shirt, why not make it in a black color? They offer all of these other colors, many of them colors that probably no one wants, and yet they aren't offering the one color that everyone wants, <laughs> black. Black does mean that you'll usually have to create an alternative design, for example, make a version where the text is white instead of black, but it's definitely worth the extra effort. Tip six, steal popular t-shirt designs from other niches. So I was having a conversation the other day with someone that wanted to create a coffee themed t-shirt. And he was like, okay, I'm gonna go away then and look for coffee themed t-shirts then. And when he said this, I was just kind of like, um, but why coffee t-shirts in particular? And he was like, well, because I wanna sell a coffee themed t-shirt. And I was like, sure, but you know what's even better than that? Finding the most popular t-shirts in general, even if they have nothing to do with your chosen niche, and then thinking about clever ways to take this visual design, text layout, and overall attitude, and then combining it with a phrase aimed at your niche. So if you wanted to create a coffee themed t-shirt, don't just research coffee themed t-shirts. Research popular designs like this in general, and then use them as inspiration to create your own niche design. Researching and spying on competitors and top selling t-shirt designs is something I discuss in my premium e-commerce video course, The Ecom Clubhouse. And if you're interested in seeing if my course might be right for you, I'll have a link to it in the video description below. Tip seven, get an honest friend or family member to look over your t-shirts. So recently, a lovely viewer, Nate, left a comment. He had opened an online store and he was getting clicks but no sales and he didn't understand why, so he wanted to know, can I review his store to tell him why? Now, whenever I see comments like Nate's, I think two things. First of all, Nate, why do you want me to review your store on this channel? Seriously, Nate, you're probably a super nice person and any store review I've done has always been very blunt. So I'm really sorry in advance, Nate. I know you've probably tried really hard when building this store, but as usual, I'm gonna be really honest and really blunt. And secondly, whenever I see comments like Nate's, I always think, oh no. I bet if I go and check out the store, it's going to be ugly as sin and look extremely unprofessional. And lo and behold, I'm pretty much always right. So yes, while we're talking about t-shirt stores in this video, and Nate's store isn't a t-shirt store, um, I think it's still extremely relevant to the discussion because I get so many people just like Nate who no matter what type of store they're opening, whether it's a t-shirt store or a dropshipping store, will leave comments asking why nobody is buying their products. And usually when I open their stores, they look as unprofessional lazy and ugly as Nate's does. Now, I honestly don't know where to start here. There's so much that's lazy about the store, but as to the ugliness, I mean, this logo has got a giant orange box around it stretching out the top of the page with the most basic menu ever next to it. Now, usually if you put your mouse over say catalog, the list of item categories will drop down, but Nate hasn't even bothered to add this most basic usability feature. 
And look, there's no favicon on the store either. It truly looks like whoever made this store had absolutely zero pride in their brand or store at all. It looks like a scammy crash grab. And I mean, seriously, check out the text on these generic stock images that don't even showcase Nate's products. <laughs> this text is some of the most generic I've ever seen. It's wherever you are. I mean, come on, Nate. What does that even mean? These phrases are so vague and meaningless, they could have been made with a marketing buzzword generator. But the laziness, it gets even worse when you come down to the product categories homepage widget. I mean, look, Nate didn't even bother to add enough items to his featured collection that he didn't even bother to name, by the way, to fill out the homepage. So you just have this giant white space here. And I couldn't help myself. I had to click on this product here featuring what might be the most ugly product thumbnail image of all time. And look, when Nate imported this from AliExpress, it came in three colors, which featured abbreviated names. And he didn't even bother to actually change GN to be green. <laughs> See, I don't know about you guys at home, but if I found myself somehow clicking on an ad for the store and I landed on it, I'd be like, okay, I need to leave. But you see, here's the thing, to you and I watching at home, these mistakes, they're glaringly obvious, right? And I don't for a moment believe that if Nate had opened up a store like this from someone else, that he would have trusted it. He would have thought it looked ugly and scammy and he would have clicked away too, just like these people who he tried to advertise to. But yet when it's him who created the store, he couldn't understand why customers were clicking away and not buying anything. He couldn't see these big red flashing faults. And you know why? Because it's genuinely very difficult for us to critically evaluate the things that we create. All of us suffer from this illusionary superiority, an inbuilt cognitive bias in our brains that makes us think we're above average at most things we do in life. And this is actually really helpful. It gives us confidence to go out there and try new things and learn new skills. Unfortunately though, it can have some downsides. And one of the downsides is that it can make us blind to the faults in the things that we create, which is why I always recommend that you get a super honest family member or friend to look over your t-shirt designs. Let them tell you what they like about them and what they don't like about them. And remember, you need to pick your absolute most honest family member or friend. Because while the truth can hurt, the truth is necessary. So suck it up, listen, and use their critiques to make your t-shirts even better. Tip eight, humor and wit sells. It's true, people love funny and witty t-shirts. Why? Well, not just because it makes them, the customer, laugh, but because it makes other people laugh. Having someone compliment your t-shirt is always awesome, and funny t-shirts always get compliments. And the great thing also is that when it comes to funny t-shirts, sometimes it just being a simple text-based design can make it funnier. This t-shirt is a top seller during holidays and it features no fancy artwork, it's just text, and as I'll show you, creating simple typography designs like this is something anyone can do. Tip nine, use Canva's awesome preset text designs. So of course, by now, my subscribers will know my love for Canva. Canva is a free app that lets you create cool pictures. And one of the best elements of Canva though for t-shirt creators is that it has inbuilt designs. So what you can do is you can take these designs and then use them to create cool typography t-shirts for free even if you aren't very good at creating text-based tees yourself because Canva has already created some nice ones for you. So you can just plug your text into it. So you take this t-shirt here. Now, as I said, this is sold really well. So let's imagine it was you that had come up with the slogan yourself. Well, what you could have done was come to Canva and then chosen one of the text elements to work with and then just plugged your quote into it. All of these designs have been made to look aesthetically pleasing. They've done the hard work of choosing fonts that go together nicely. So these can be a great way to get started making your first text-based tees. And so you can play around with options like sizing and colors as well. And a pro tip, because lots of people ask me this question, is that once you create a picture with Canva, if you're using their free account, it will have a white background. So what you can do is use free apps like online PNG tools to remove the white background for you. You can just Google this to find it and you can then upload the transparent file and boom, we have our own aesthetically pleasing version of this top selling t-shirt. Tip 10, use personalization to create a viral design. So this product I'm about to show you, it's not a t-shirt, it is a mug, but it gets advertised to me a lot on Facebook because it is a top selling mug. So this is the mug here. Now on one side, you have a beautifully painted picture of a guy and his cat. Now on the other side, you have a fun typography design. Well, the real kicker is that you also get to personalize this mug. So 
you get to put your name of the cat and the name of yourself or the name of the person you're gifting the mug to onto it. So you can immediately see why this design was super popular. This has now been copied to death, so I don't suggest that you copy this too. But I wanted to show it to you because look at how popular this mug has been. It's a mug that is profitable to run Facebook ads to because people love it. Imagine something like this, but on a t-shirt. Now, again, I'm not suggesting that you go and you copy this because again, people have copied this a lot already. But I've recently been seeing examples more and more of people taking advantage of personalization to create viral products with print on demand. Like this mug here. This mug has also been really successful and they've been able to run Facebook ads to it profitably promoting it. And this design that's even simpler and would have been even easier and cheaper to outsource to an artist and it would work just as well on a t-shirt as well. And the cool thing is that the moment that a t-shirt is personalized, you can charge more for it. Because think about it, the way that most people decide how much they should pay for a product is through a process called price anchoring. When they see your t-shirt, they go, hmm, is this actually a good price? Well, when I go to my local Walmart, I pay 10 to $20 for a graphic t-shirt. And if I go to my mall, I'll find Supreme t-shirts for $150 to $300. And if I go to Etsy, I'll find indie t-shirt brands like Smash Transit selling their t-shirts for $30. They'll then use these prices to gauge how much they should pay for your t-shirt. But here is the thing, the moment you take a t-shirt and personalize it, now you're suddenly creating a product that's unlike anything they've seen before. They can't find your t-shirt at Walmart because now it's a t-shirt that's custom made to order. And so because of the fact that customers can't go, oh, I can just find a cheaper graphic t-shirt at Walmart because they can't find a t-shirt like yours at all, now you can charge higher prices. Spot is a t-shirt print on demand app that I've been testing out and I've been having great results with it. So right now their fulfillment times are seven to 10 business days, which is awesome in our COVID-19 era. And they have the ability to let customers personalize t-shirts, such as adding in their own names or the names of their pets. So I definitely recommend checking them out. So if this video helps you, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more videos about making money selling products online and click that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. And if you're interested in seeing some more top selling t-shirt designs, I actually have a video which shows five different t-shirts that made over $100,000. So I'll have a link to it here on this page. So go ahead, watch my next video, and I'll see you over there.